In this video, we discuss one of the first algorithms that people typically learn about, the linear search. For each of our algorithm videos, we're going to provide you at the front with a quick checklist of things you need to be able to do in the exam for that algorithm. So for a linear search, you need to understand its main steps, any prerequisites, you need to be able to apply the algorithm to a data set, identify it from its code, read and trace it, and also be able to recreate or write it in the exam. So the linear search finds an item in a sorted or unsorted list. A linear search starts with the first item in the list and checks each item one by one. Think about searching for a card in a shuffle deck, starting with the top card and checking each one until you find the card you want. So the linear search doesn't require the data set to be in any particular given order. It can be efficient for small data sets, but is typically quite inefficient for large data sets. The linear search is ideal for finding items in small data sets and searching unordered data such as settings files. A typical use for linear search would be to find and replace function in a word processor. It is the easiest searching algorithm to implement, but usually the most inefficient. If illustrations help you remember, this is how you can visualize a linear search. So here's some pseudocode. We start by initialising a couple of variables with their starting state. We have found this Boolean value is used to indicate whether the item we are searching for has been found or not. So we start by setting it to false. And index. This specifies the current position in the data set starting at zero. We'll assume the data set being searched is stored in a simple data structure in this example, like an array or list. We then enter a while loop that will continue to execute while the following two conditions are met. Found is false and index is less than the length of the item set we're looking through. In other words, the program will keep executing this loop until it either finds the item or reaches the end of the data set. Each time around the loop, the program checks to see if the current item is the one we're searching for. If it is, the program sets the Boolean flag found to true, which will cause the loop to exit at the start of the next iteration. If it isn't, we increment the index variable by one, meaning that the next time around the loop, the program will be checking against the next location in the data set. So that's the bare bones of the algorithm. Now in its current form, it doesn't actually have a data set to search against, or anything to do if the item is actually found. So we'd need to implement additional code. For example, once the algorithm has executed, we could check the found variable. And if it was true, we could further check the index variable to discover where the item is located within the data set. Here's some syntactically correct Python code that demonstrates the linear search algorithm in practice. We've added a hard-coded list called items, which contains five American states and an input asking the user to enter a state. Let's assume the user is looking for Delaware. This string will be stored in the variable item to find. We've also added code to output whether the item was found and its position in the list if it was. So we start by initializing the variables index to zero and found to false. program checks to see if it needs to enter the while loop. Found equals false is true, and index less than length items is also true. We hit an if statement and check if items index equals the item to find. Well, items index is item zero, and that's Florida. Item to find is Delaware, so Florida equals Delaware is false. 
So we jump to the else part of the statement and we increment the value of the index variable by one. The program checks if we need to enter the while loop again. Found equals false is still true and index is less than the length of the items data set is also true. We hit the if statement again and check if items index equals the item to find. Well, items index is now position one and that's Georgia. Item to find is still Delaware. Georgia equals Delaware is obviously false. So again, we jump to the else part of the if statement and we increment the value of the index variable by one. Back at the while loop, we check if we need to enter it one more time. Well, found still equals false, that bit's true, and index is still less than the length of the item's data set, so that's also true. We hit the if statement and we check if the item in the current index is the item to find. So this time, we're index is at two. Items two is Delaware. Items to find, that's still Delaware. So Delaware equals Delaware is true. So we've found a match. So this time we execute the first part of the if statement and that sets the value of our found variable to true for the first time. The program checks if it needs to enter the while loop again. Found equals false is now false because obviously we have found an item and that variable is currently set to true. Index is still less than a length item, so that remains true. But as the while loop requires both conditions to be true and they're not, we don't enter the loop again. Instead, we continue with the rest of the program. So finally, we check to see if found is equal to true, which of course it currently is because we did find the item. So we execute the first part of the statement, which outputs to the user the item found at position two. So we've run through the algorithm, we've stepped through some code, but let's consider a few final thoughts. These are the sort of things that can often catch you out in the exam. So is this the definitive pseudocode and Python code for a linear search? Well, yes and no. Pseudocode doesn't have a fixed formal syntax, and even if you choose a specific high-level programming language such as Python, that doesn't mean there is only one way of coding an algorithm. Even with a simple algorithm like the linear search, you may see slightly different versions in textbooks, past exam papers and other videos. It all comes down to how you choose to implement the algorithm when you write it in code. Now this can seem quite counterintuitive for both students and teachers when first learning this subject. Try to get away from the idea that one particular implementation of an algorithm is correct and therefore any other variations must have mistakes. This is not the case. So if the choice of how to implement an algorithm isn't the deciding factor on whether that algorithm is correct or not, what is? Well, an algorithm is correct if it produces the correct result for all input instances, and that's it. So for a linear search, the algorithm must be able to locate an item in a data set if it exists. It must be able to locate the item regardless of whether the data set is sorted or unsorted. It should run without crashing, even if the item being searched for doesn't exist in the data set. And it should check each item sequentially, starting with the first item. So here we've made a small change in the first part of the while loop. We've replaced found equals false with not found. Now this is a very minor change, but something which can be done in virtually all programming languages. Regardless, this is still a valid and thus correct implementation of the linear search algorithm. Here, the change is a little more dramatic. We've moved the index equals index plus one line of code that previously sat inside the else section of the if statement. In this version, the value of index is incremented by one with each go around the loop. 
So to make sure the algorithm outputs the correct location of the item, we would simply adjust the output line at the end to print item found at position index minus one. These changes don't break the algorithm, it's just different. You could argue it's slightly less efficient, but it's still a valid linear search. In this implementation, we're not even using a while loop, we're using a for loop instead. This version is iterating through the entire data set, regardless of whether it's found the item it's searching for or not. We've introduced an extra variable called counter and an if statement, which we're using to track the position where the item is found in the data set. Now, you could argue that this is a poor implementation of the linear search algorithm. However, it is still a linear search. So here's the original version again. And it may have already occurred to you that the way we implemented this algorithm has its own limitations. This version exits as soon as the first occurrence of the item we're searching for is found. What if there are multiple occurrences of the item in the data set? Maybe you want to find the first occurrence, the last occurrence, all occurrences. It all comes down to how you choose to implement the algorithm when you write it in code. We will always present you with a method we feel is efficient, simple and clear. But in the exam, make sure to read any question that expects you to code an algorithm carefully. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. Can you successfully implement a linear search in a high level programming language of your choice? And do you understand how a linear search works? And can you trace its code and explain it? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally, we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB, so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.